What's up, people? I've been trying to toss around in the brain space how to do this one. Basically, basically, I went to do a diagnosis, realized somebody had already done it. Okay, wasn't me. Wasn't even my company. Don't know who it was. But, uh... We did like so diagnosis and then there was a compressor and then there was a another thing you had to watch okay to see all the deals but i i can't make this all one video it's gonna be like a kabillion hours long so we're gonna split it up into three parts okay uh diagnosis repair one and once repair one is done i see what needs to happen with the number the repair the let me get it running the right way at the end of the day. Look, these ain't gonna be back-to-back -back uploads, all right? I, it takes some time, but I'm gonna do my best to get them up as quickly as humanly possible, okay? And then, uh, and then, uh, well, here, part one. Let's be the shortest one, okay? Enjoy. Catch you on the next one, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit of a long climb here up the almost completely enclosed cage around this ladder. Oops. So today we have a dead thermostat. Dead thermostat basically means your transformer lost power. Uh, could be any number of reasons. Could be a smoke detector. Could be trip breaker. Could be a blown transformer. We're gonna figure out why. Should be this courier right here. Now the maintenance lady said that she had a maintenance guy look at it and say something about the breaker. I don't, I'm gonna go with, let's see. That's what I'm gonna go with. So, pretend like I didn't hear anything that she said. And we're gonna diagnose it as if this is the first time I'm seeing it. And I don't know if you noticed this or not, but whew, I'm gonna catch my breath after that climb. Goodness gracious, I got a 5K coming up. Whew. So the good old D-walled impact took about a 20 foot drop, fell right out of my dang belt loop. And I've dropped impacts before. And when I have, I've been lucky enough where they landed on the battery and just broke the battery. This is actually one of the batteries that broke. You see how it's split right here? Battery still works, people. Sometimes I gotta hold her on there, but check this out. This thing just split. I mean, it hit in the wrong spot. This whole thing separated. But guess what? Good old zip tie. I'm sure as soon as I do that. Oh, I took the battery out. <laughs> oh, you just saw it work, so you know it works. That was hilarious. It don't work without the battery, boy. All right, let's check this um, power here. I know, I'm a Dewalt guy, okay? So use Milwaukee people. I'm okay with Milwaukee. Milwaukee's got some pretty tough, pretty good equipment and tools. They're pretty decent quality. I'm not, I'm not mad about Milwaukee, okay? I'm not gonna dog it. Well, I will to my friends that are Milwaukee people just because that's what I do. All right, we have, why one has been removed? Well, that's interesting. Wonder why that happened. Somebody has pulled off Y1 and taped it. 
I don't know why. Transformer's not tripped. Let's see if this fuse is blown. Fuse is not blown, so we probably have something grounded. Let's see if we got power to the disconnect. My fluco meter, okay? Fluco meter. All right, we got fuses in here, huh? Hopefully we blew a fuse before we blew the power. Where's my incoming? It is right here, incoming goes to the top. Hey, it's supposed to always go to the top, but you know what? You, if I didn't install it, I don't know. I'm gonna follow it anyway. 480, 480, 480. Now we're gonna check continuity. Actually, I don't even have to, yeah. I need to check continuity across this, these fuses and see if we got blowed ones. That one's good. That one's blown. So leg two is blown. Leg three is good. So the next step I'm gonna do, because I can go replace a fuse, but then what's gonna happen if it just blows again? Because I got something not looking bueno, right? So we are going to check. Ooh, that this that contactor is extremely pitted. You know, pitted contactor is not something that I usually care about. But when you see the charring going like outside of its normal area, let me see if I can get you close enough. Yeah, kinda. There's charring coming around the top and bottom of each pole. That that's a little much, you know. I I think that the recipe for disaster. A little bit of pitting is not a bad thing, all right? I don't care, you can say what you want, all right? Some people use it as an excuse to, to make, you know, companies spend money. Oh, you need a contactor, because it's an hour labor, 100% markup. But I'm not that, I'm not that guy, you know? But when they get this bad, it is, it is definitely a point at which we should probably go ahead and get another one put in there whenever we do this repair. So I'm gonna do, checking this compressor to ground my compressor wires are going to be coming off the top let's just check both of them to ground anyway come on wires all right i'm gonna have to actually go to the compressor which is okay let's go to it see what we can find out and then we're going to check that blower out a blower is running off of a relay off of this control board um yeah, we'll check that one out next. Compressor should be right over here. Can't believe this thing still works after being completely separated. Held together by a zip tie. My company buys all of our... Oh, look, compressor's not even connected. <laughs> That's not new tape either. Somebody's been up here, but it hasn't been. It wasn't yesterday, okay? Wasn't yesterday. So somebody's not telling me the full story. Uh, I guess they don't want. Yeah, that's a grounded compressor. So we got a grounded compressor. Super, super wonderful. Um, easy diagnosis, people. Now. The question is, why did it ground out? Like, what happened? I always like to turn the fan blade just to see if it spins freely. That's not a determination of if it's good or not, okay? But if you cannot spin it freely, it is a determination that it's bad, all right? But just because it does spin doesn't mean it's good. It just means there's a chance. So what you're saying is there's a chance. Yeah, there's a chance. So, I'm gonna take some pictures of this compressor. Basically, there's not a whole lot we can do until we get a new compressor in it. I mean, new compressor, that's a C. It looks like an, a 183 dryer. C183, yeah. 
uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go with C-183. I could put a 163 in there, but I think that'd be too big. So we're gonna go with a C-183 dryer. Obviously we need a compressor. They didn't tell me all of the goods, you know, the info that I'm gonna need. Filters look great. Someone has been up here very recently. So basically I could have just said, hey bro, we got a ground a compressor. And yes, I would have come to check it anyway, because that's what I do. Um, but I mean, we're gonna do a compressor, dryer, contactor. They turned the thing back on because they thought it would get the blower running, but it's not gonna get the blower running unless we have fuses, which reminds me. Oh, look, somebody wrote some stuff over here. What is it? Work order 20114, number one, 10223. Oh, that was a while back. That was a year ago. Surely they have not been running with this with, for a whole, without this for a whole year. It's a TRS15R. So when you get fuses, people, please don't just get one. Like I only have one bad fuse here. I'm not gonna go buy one fuse, all right? If somebody had pre-thought this ahead of time, there would have been spare fuses in here already. Now, if there were spare fuses in here and the first thing you did was come over here and be like, oh, it's just a blown fuse and you stuck a new fuse in there and you turned everything on, it's gonna blow your new fuse. That's a complete and total waste of money. So if you do have blown fuses, find out why. Maybe you just got a wire that's arced out. Fix your wire, replace your fuse with your spare, and you can move on with their lives and everything's fixed. But if somebody didn't have the forethought to put extra fuses in here, then you don't, you don't even have, you don't have the option. So I'm gonna get three fuses. Actually, I'm gonna get four, so they have three spares. I'm gonna shove them in the thing here, and then they're gonna, you know, have the fuses for next time. I know they're gonna approve this quote. So this will be, part one of two parts obviously uh, while I'm in it let's go ahead and check the blower go ahead and check all the things why not all right I'm gonna check the heat exchanger I'm gonna check all the things because if I come over here and replace this compressor and get them cooling which 50 degrees outside right now now this is in their defense this is our First cold spell of the year, and I know some of y'all be like, yeah, 50 degrees isn't cold. Well, you know what? For your boy, it's cold, all right? All right? Anything below 60, and this boy puts the layers on. I don't like any, I don't like anything. You know, how about this? I wish it was 95 every day, day and night, okay? That, that's, that would be my dream world. I know, I'm living in the wrong place for that, but that's all right. That, that's in my side note. So let me zip these screws out and we'll check the heat exchanger. Because if we got a compressor and a heat exchanger, we want to take care of them all. This unit is how old? 13 years old. Man, I got to mark these holes because somebody's reused. So this one was here here I got three screws out that was that one and I got here here I'm gonna mark all the holes just because somebody has already been in this heat exchanger it's probably good but carriers are notorious for their heat exchanger is not lasting and I wouldn't be surprised if we got holes already. Oh, that's brand new. That is literally brand spanking new. There ain't nothing wrong with this heat exchanger. I won't even be able to do a scratch test on it. That's how, that's how noise it is. So, somebody was in here recently doing a heat exchanger and that's all right 
and no, there's no way that someone doing a heat exchanger can cause the compressor to ground out. I mean, it'd be really hard for someone to actually force a compressor to ground. You could do it by, well, I'm not gonna tell you how you could do it. I'm gonna get all these hate messages. You taught them how to do this and they burned up my compressor. No, I'm not gonna, so I'm not gonna teach that. All right, I'm not teaching malice. We don't want malice. Am I missing a screw? Did I mark too many holes? I think I marked too many holes. Because I don't have another screw. Okay, heat exchanger's good. When they replaced the heat exchanger, I can already tell you they did not replace any of the safeties. They're all the old safeties, which is what it is. They apparently don't watch my videos, and if they do, they apparently don't take my advice. So we're gonna mark these holes too. We're gonna check the blower, blower wheel, belts, bearings. Like I said, when I leave this job, after this compressor is replaced, I don't, I don't want to come back for something stupid. Now, if I come back because a safety has failed, well, I'm gonna blame that on whoever replaced the heat exchanger. I just know it wasn't my company because, or not my company, the company I work for, because this is the first time we've been on this, in this area, on this job. All right, so this belt definitely needs to be tightened. It's not gonna matter until I get um, that fuse replaced because it's not gonna run anyway. So, um, wow. This hasn't run in a while. So here's how I know. All right, I'm gonna video this with my phone so I can put this in my notes. When we turn this blower wheel, we see the lump come up. That means that this belt has been sitting in this position for a long time. So um, the belt has basically formed to the pulleys and it ain't running a minute i don't know if they're trying to get quotes from somebody else I, there's, there's some things they didn't tell me which is okay it's okay maybe they don't trust the people that that came out here to begin with but we're gonna do them right and find us a compressor dryer contactor get her all put in set up and good to go let's do a quick quick roof walk man it's a big roof so it probably won't be that quick i'm not gonna walk the whole thing there ain't a whole lot up here to look at and this wind is brutal and i am seriously i could cut some glass with the nipples right now uh they like carriers okay got another one right now another one right now you know while i'm at it i am going to go ahead and pop open the heat exchangers on the other ones i'm only doing that because we are right at the cold season and uh i see it as a preventative it's going to take 10 minutes okay i'm not taking up a lot of their time that's going to be I thought i smell gas it's not going to take up a lot of time that's going to be crucial to their bill or anything but if i do find something wrong and I do find holes, then it's gonna save them time whenever it's actually real cold outside and the heaters are needed. Right now it's like 74 degrees inside the building. All right, it's nice. They they can't complain. Well, they can, but whatever. It, it feels good, so whatever. This side over here is a different suite. So there's four suites in this building. This building is, you know, a little bigger than a football field. Um, including the stadium <laughs> they like trains over here right, i got six trains looks like two carrier split systems i don't like the split systems got a bunch of exhaust fans because there's a lot of warehouse in this area those exhaust fans are needed for well in case there's a fire and something is just screaming i wonder if that's this exhaust fan that is loud 
Yeah, it's coming from this guy right here. She's moving air. I'm not gonna mess with it. That's not the sound of a belt screeching. Can't really tell if it's a whistle from air or what. A bird, 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 go dove. Just kidding. Just kidding, people. Animal rights people. I'm so sorry. Carrier, carrier, times four. That's sweet 200. Trains are sweet 100. Oh, we got a mixed up crew melting pot on this side, all right? Looks like uh, Linux or Allied, same thing. Train, carrier, carrier. More vent hoods. Skylight, 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 skylight. Make sure you walk right on top of the skylights, really important. They can definitely hold your weight. Please don't do that. Okay, I'm kidding. Don't walk on the skylights. That's really stupid to walk on skylights. I said that in the same breath for a reason, because some idiot's gonna do it. Don't be an idiot, all right? Don't walk on skylights. Let's use common sense. Gas line, gas line, gas line. So their heat ain't working anyway, because their gas is turned off. Um, but I'm gonna go over here, pop open these heat exchangers, take a look. I'm not gonna bore you with that. Uh, Unless I, if I see one with holes in it, sure, I'll click back in. Uh, but if you don't see me click back in, then you'll realize that, well, the boy didn't find any holes. So the fact that one of them has already been replaced kind of tells me they, they probably should have looked at the other two while they were at it. Um, I don't know, maybe they didn't. I don't know. I'll find out soon. Anyway, there'll be a part two for this at some point when that compressor gets replaced be an easy replacement the hardest part is going to be getting the dead gum thing on the roof um well, unless i find holes that's all i got for you today deuces